Let me tell you about the boat shop. Hi, this is Joe with Motor City Boat Works. I've received some questions. People want to know more information about the shop. So I thought I'd take a moment and I'll tell you a little bit about it. I know it's a little bit of a divergence from the normal boat projects that I usually cover. But over the next couple of episodes, I'm going to talk about how and why I built the boat shop. I'm going to talk about its actual construction and some choices that I made. I'm going to talk about lessons that I learned and ultimately I'll give you an idea of what it costs to build something like this. It's a lot of information and it'll take a little bit of time, but I hope you stick with me. I promise we'll get back to boat projects. I've got several in the works and they'll be ready for production very soon. For almost the entire time that I've been working on boats, messing about with boat restoration, building boats and screwing around with them, I never really had a shop to work out of. Probably just like everybody else who's first starting out, I was restoring boats in a parking lot of my apartment or in the backyard or in my driveway with the neighbors looking on. I've restored boats on the water. My first sailboat, the classic Allberg 30 that I lived on for a number of years, well that boat, I actually was working on it while I was living on it. Just like you see on all the YouTube channels, people struggling to get their projects done where they're also living inside the boat at the same time. It's a real nightmare. I always thought to myself, man, I really enjoy working on boats. I always wanted to own a marina or a boat shop, but I couldn't afford it. It was just kind of a fantasy I had. Quitting my day job and going and hanging out working in a boat yard. Maybe just the corner of a of a marina or a warehouse where I could work on a boat, man, I'd be in heaven. Fast forward 20 years, and my last house, it was on more than an acre. I had just enough room to park a boat and perhaps build a boat shop. I built a little boat yard next to the driveway, just some gravel and some railroad ties. That's where I parked the Alban 27 when I first got it. I basically worked on it under a tarp. Leaves would fall on the boat and every time I got ready to start work, I'd have to spend 30 minutes to get it clean. And every time I was done working, I had to cover it back up so I could go back to my day job. I thought to myself, there's got to be a better way. Are you enjoying the show? Well, do me a favor. Would you hit the like button and also subscribe? Spread the word about Motor City Boat Works. No BS, just boats and restoration. <laughs> As I approach retirement, so much of my identity was attached to my career that I had had most of my adult life. And I started thinking about, well, what do I want to do the second half of my life? What was it going to all be about? And I decided I always wanted to work on boats and I always wanted to have a boat shop. So I decided I was going to build a boat shop and I would be the only customer. You know, back in the day, I learned how to restore boats from my sailing mentor in the Marine Corps and from the old salts at the marina who took me under their wing and made me show me how to do something or they at least let me watch them while they worked on a project. When I retired, I thought I would like to give something back and I started making videos about how I do my boat projects and I just thought, well, maybe this will be a great way to incorporate it into the shop. You spend your whole life trying to do the right thing. You save all your money. You do everything you're supposed to do. And as you get towards the end, you start thinking, wait, there's got to be more to it. It might be vanity. It might be pure foolishness. But I kind of feel like you're never too old to pursue your dream. So it's a pole barn build. Uh, the supports are six by six treated lumber uh, poles, right? They're put into the ground. There's a concrete pad that's then laid uh, into the foundation. I like to say the building is uh, 30 by 40, but in reality, it's closer to an odd measurement. It's actually more like 37 by 27 feet, some odd measurement. Tip number one, know your zoning. 
And the reason for that is where I live, there are some zoning requirements. The size of your outbuildings cannot exceed the size of the square footage of your house minus the square footage of your attached garage and a whole other sort of formula that they use to compute. And the bottom line was that this building was not going to be able to be more than about, you know, 1100 square feet. So it's not quite 1200 square feet. It's not quite 30 by 40. But I had to figure out ahead of time using this zoning formula from my county to basically how big could the building be right up to the limit because I really wanted to maximize the space. Tip number two, figure out exactly how big you need it. The old adage, right, to get it as big as you possibly can, well, that's what you want to do whenever you have a shop. You, you, you'll, you'll always fill it up with something. And so you got to go as big as you possibly can. I was able to use some free rendering software online. One of the DIY big box stores create a virtual mock-up of what a DIY pole barn might look like. And uh, I used that initially to give me an idea of where I might like to place the windows and the doors and uh, just an overall kind of idea of what this thing might look like. I knew that I wanted my boat shop to be uh, almost 30 by 40 feet and I wanted it to have 16 foot sidewalls. Now on an average pole barn that you might find someone's got for their collector car collection or something like that, they're, you're going to be looking at a pole barn that has maybe 12 to 14 foot sidewalls. That's the height of the side of the building. The standard is about 12 feet, might be 14 feet, but finding something that was taller than that was really quite unusual. You know, early on when I was looking at uh, virtual designs of what the building might look like, I just couldn't get an idea in my mind of how big was a 16 foot sidewall building. And I ended up kind of driving around a Detroit area, always looking at uh, commercial buildings and fire stations and any type of garage that I could see trying to understand like, well, how big is 16 foot? Because pretty much everything you see residential is always 12 to 14 feet. When we first came back from overseas, I was looking for a new property and I really hoped to be able to find a house that would have a pole barn already attached to it or, or partially done. Something that I could kind of work on and modify to my needs. But the reality is, is that most people do not build a pole barn that has 16 foot sidewalls or taller. Uh, everything is around 12 to 14 foot tall. The Alban 27 family cruiser, when it sits on a trailer, is approximately 13 feet tall and I mean it's every inch of of the 13 feet uh, it may even go over that so what that means is that you cannot have a pole barn that has a 12 foot door opening it's just not going to be big enough so you've got to go to the next level which is 14 and unfortunately if you have a 14 foot door well if you have any sort of radar arch or any other equipment on the top of the boat uh, you're going to have a real difficult time kind of squeezing that thing in and out. So uh, I knew that I wanted to have 16 foot sidewalls and I wanted to put that, put the, and I wanted to put the ceiling as high as I could possibly get it. I also thought there might be a possibility down the road that I might explore working on some other boats. Perhaps once I finish the Alban 27 or another project comes along, I wanted to be able to do a deep keel sailboat and I knew that I was going to need something that was probably bigger than 14 foot tall. Tip number three, know your options. This led me to, to do some research and choose an option called scissor trusses. In a normal pole barn or uh, outbuilding, uh, you know, the, the trusses for the roof, they're like a triangle. And the ceiling then is, you know, at the bottom of the triangle. But you can buy what's called scissor trusses. The ceiling trusses are actually raised higher. And this gives kind of like a cathedral ceiling inside the building. Uh, and it gives you quite a bit of headroom in the center. So I ended up choosing 16-foot sidewalls with... Scissor trusses, which brings my center height inside the boat shop to almost 20 feet. 
It's really great. This ensures that I can climb on top of the Albin 27 at 13 feet tall, and I can still move around and do whatever I need to do on top of the boat. Tip number four, plan for high ceilings. One of the things you have to think about when you go to 16 foot sidewalls is that now everything inside the, the shop is quite a bit higher than it would be in any sort of normal shop. So when you have contractors come to the building to put in electrical or to work on the lights or to do any sort of thing, you have to make sure that you tell them, listen, the ceiling is at 20 feet in the center and the sidewalls are at 16 foot tall. You need to make sure you have the ability to get up there and, and work where you need to work. Uh, a normal eight foot, 12 foot step ladder is not gonna do it and uh, some places you can't put a 40 foot extension ladder. You've, you've got to have uh, some way to get up high. Another Craigslist find was a 16 foot step ladder so I can get up and access everything I need to inside the building. Tip number five, know your limits. I ultimately chose to have a builder build my sh uh, shop. And the reason was because I'm just one guy. I don't have any manpower. Or, and I really don't have the time to be able to try and undertake a construction project of this sort. I've remodeled several houses, but this was something that was just gonna be a little bit beyond my ability at the time. So I decided to hire a company to build the entire building. This in itself proved to be a real challenge because at the time that I started uh, getting ready to have the building made was around September of 2020, right at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. And it was real difficult actually finding a builder that I felt was competent or capable of being able to, to build this thing. There's a lot of them advertising online uh, and, and locally. Oh yeah, we'll build you a pole barn. We can do this, we can do that. And what happens is when you start calling these folks and really getting into the nitty gritty of, uh, of the of build times and specs and the actual costs, well, you come to realize that a lot of people are not actually building pole barns. They're kind of middlemen, sourcing out the labor to someone else and uh, kind of acting as a broker to kind of get the job done. And that's really not what I wanted. I, I wanted to cut out the middlemen and be talking to the builder who was gonna be doing the actual work. There's a lot of people out there advertising that they're building pole barns. And while they might build a pole barn once a year, once every 18 months, that's not really who I wanted to build my pole barn. I, I wanted someone who was doing it on a regular basis and really knew what they were doing. I ended up going with a company here kind of in uh, the D Detroit area. They build about 50 pole barns a year and uh, all over the state. And uh, they really kind of have a reputation for doing an exceptional job. Tip number six, get a pre-build estimate in person. So I hired this company and right away they sent someone out to the house to kind of scope out the project and get an idea of what I wanted. This was a great thing because it kind of allowed me to, to talk to someone face to face to discuss some options. Tip number seven, the estimate should be detailed and specific. They, they ended up giving me an estimate based off of that first meeting and uh, the, the estimate looked good, so that's what we went with. Tip number eight, finish interior walls during the build. The exterior siding of the building is metal, of course. It's not a metal building, they call it a pole barn where I'm at in Michigan. My understanding is that metal buildings, well, they're actually all metal. The internal frame and the exterior, well, that's all metal. But this is essentially a post building with the metal uh, sheathing on the outside and it's all weather there's there's no concerns about rust or anything like that it's guaranteed 30 40 years or something now one of the things that I did was uh, you know I told the builders that I wanted to have the inside of the pole barn finished out I wanted to have it lined 
and I did a bunch of research on this. I knew it was gonna, I wanted to have it insulated and uh, I did a lot of research on trying to figure out well, well, what should the walls be made out of and from a cost saving point of view it just made sense to go with this barn liner. Now barn liner is basically a slightly lighter gauged version of the metal sheathing that's on the outside of the building but this is on the inside. Um, this the interior they call it barn liner actually has uh, some less coatings than the exterior stuff does so it's not all weather it's not designed to be on the exterior but on the interior it's great it gives a really great finish everything is very very clean easy to be cleaned it's been super super low maintenance and uh, um, it uh, it's not necessarily glossy it's kind of like a nice satin finish so there's not too much reflective light to, to bother you the barn liner doesn't come smooth it has kind of like a rib texture to it very similar to the exterior of the building now down the road this presents a little bit of a challenge because unlike drywall or osb siding or anything like that when you get ready to screw something into the side of the of the building here or to mount any cabinets or anything inside you know you've got you're only screwing into the thin metal thickness so you've got to make sure that you're mounting things essentially on the posts tip number nine pay attention to doors and windows now my shop has seven three foot by three foot windows that go around the exterior of the building and then a double French door for the side entrance. The garage door is 16 by 16 feet. Tip number 10, keep the windows high to maximize light. The higher your windows are, the more light you're gonna bring into the shop. So I intentionally set my windows at higher than six foot. I also put the windows for the garage door in uh, almost to the highest position possible to ensure that light came from above rather than being brought in from the sides. It's made a huge difference inside the workshop. It's always light and it feels very airy. I think we've reached a good stopping point. Next episode, I'm going to talk about how the pole barn was actually built and some things I learned along the way. If you have a question for me, please leave a comment below or contact me via the Motor City Boat Works website. The email is listed on the description and my YouTube channel. Thank you and have a great week. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.